What's going on everybody, Josh Pokalk here, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some crazy new updates from Ader, the AI pair programmer. Last week, they launched some really cool stuff with version 0.57, and then just a week later today, they launched version 0.58, which has their new architect and editor feature. I'm going to show you how you can use it today. Let's dive right in. Alright guys, so recently I did a few videos. I did a video on Claude Deb's recent updates and I mentioned in there that the founder has been rolling out updates really, really quickly and it's very impressive to see, but also I mentioned in the video that, damn, he's probably writing Claude Dev or building Claude Dev and then using Claude Dev to build Claude Dev. It's like a reflexive cycle and the input feedback loop of him being able to code, iterate and improve is getting shorter and shorter and tightening up. But we can see the same thing with Ader, all right? That's what's happening with these AI pair programmers. So uh, last week, I was actually going to do a video on this update, 0.57. And before I could even get to it, they actually just dropped an even more impressive version, which is 0.58, 12 hours ago. All right, we're going to dive into this in just a second. But before I do, I want to go over to Twitter and take a look at some of the tweets here. So uh, new Quen 2.5 models are on the Ader leaderboard. So I did a video on Quen 2.5 yesterday, or no, two days ago. And um, we'll take a look at how it compares on their Ader leaderboards. All right, so on September 21st, you could see the version 0.57 dropped. We'll go over the change log in just a second. And then, and then we can see he says that the new Gemini models perform basically the same as the previous versions on Ader code editing benchmarks. The differences seen within the margin of error. And we can see the graph right here. And then 12 hours ago, he tweets out saying Ader version 0.58 is out with the new architect and editor coding configuration support for gemini 002 better support for quen 2.5 and many qol features and bug fixes the crazy part to see is that he says ader wrote 53 percent of the code in this release really really cool really impressive to see and this is like, like i said this is what we're going to be seeing more and more happening, this percentage increasing as these models get better. And um, yeah, it's really uh, requiring less you know, manual human code being written in these releases and more just AI. I mean, but this is also pretty common. We're seeing if you look at you know the activity in any single repo on GitHub and any single project over the last two, three years. All right, so here's version 0.57. We'll not really go over this one too, too much because it's kind of a lot of it is referenced in version um, 58, but we'll go over some. So, you know, support for the new O1 models. And then you can now recursively add directories with read only numerous bug fixes. And and I'd say this one's a smaller release opposed to something obviously like the 58 with artifact and editor. But we can see here Ader wrote 70 percent of the code in this release. Right. So it's just um, it's getting to the point where it's really just self-improving. And, uh, well, I mean, it is, but, you know, until it's just completely self-improving. Um, anyways, so we can see with the 58 update, we got, uh, use the new architect and editor models for improve your coding. Use a strong reasoning model like O1 preview as your architect and use a cheaper, faster model like GPT 4O as your editor. All right. My first thoughts on this, um, before even really trying it out is that this is like kind of similar in a way to composer but it's not at the same time it's a little bit different but i mean it has a similar type name a lot of these models are getting kind of going in that route where there's like an architect or a composer or i think claude dev has a name for one i forget but or they will if they don't um and then support for the gemini models better support for quen 2.5 models many configuration questions have been can be skipped for the rest of the session with don't ask again responses and then autocomplete for read only support the entire supports the entire file system new settings for completion menu colors and then new copy command to copy the last llm response to your clipboard i mean that's pretty useful renamed clipboard to paste 
and then we'll now follow http requests when scraping urls so that's pretty impressive and then new voice format switch to send voice audio as wave mp3 or webm and then model settings takes extra params dict to specify any extras to pass to light llm completion and then support for cursor shapes when in vim mode numerous bug fixes and then we can see a graph here basically um, around their architect model and we can see some of the top um, models right here gpt40 mini 01 mini um gpt40 claude sonnet 3.5 and then 01 preview and we can see this is with the editor or architect model and then the editor model and the edit uh format so we can see baseline uh with gpt40 mini gpt40 mini whole and then 01 mini baseline deep seek diff gpt40 diff Deep Sea Hole, um, Baseline, Deep Sea Cool with GPT 4.0, Diff, uh, and then uh, GPT 4.0, Diff, and then Baseline with Claude Sonnet, Deep Sea Cool, Deep Sea Diff, Claude Sonnet Diff here, and then same thing with 01 Preview, we got Baseline, GPT 4.0 Diff, Deep Sea Diff, Claude Sonnet Diff, and then Deep Sea Cool. So DeepSeek, the new 2.5, which I did a video on and basically was saying in that video that, you know, it's one of the best, if not the best currently right now for open source coding. We can see here it being paired with some of these other models basically gives um, within their test a lot of the time gives the best results. And we'll dive into that in just a second. And then also, too, I just want to highlight here's the release history here. So percent of new code written by Ader by, uh, by release, we can see that. This not this has substantially increased as we can see here, like 50%. It's consistently started doing like 50 to 60 to 70%. Like 70% was the peak, which was this last recent release at 57. Uh, so the, the release before 58. And uh, it's yeah, it's been increasing. And then lines of new code written by Ader by release. We can see here it's been increasing pretty much as well. So pretty impressive to see. All right, so the way to start actually using Architect is you're going to want to go to the Ader site and links for everything I showed in this video will be in the description down below. You're going to want to go on installation, go to optional steps, and you will see there's uh, optional steps, right? We can see enable playwright. We can see enable voice coding right here. The different commands for that. Add Ader to your editor. NeoVim VS Code. So they have a VS Code extension too if you want to check that out, but I think I don't know if how well that works. Um, but here we're going to want to install the development version of Ader. All right, so you're going to run this command right here. All right, so I'm in VS Code in a terminal and I'm running python m pip install dash dash upgrade git plus http github etc etc. So we're installing building dependencies. All right, as that's installing, we'll see here architect mode and editor mode. When you are in architect mode, Ader sends your request to two models. First, it sends your request to the main active model. That main model is configured with forward slash model, dash dash model, or the shortcut switches like dash dash sonnet. After the main model replies, Ader will offer to edit the files based on the response. To edit the files, Ader sends a second LLM request asking for specific editing instructions. This request goes to the editor model. Ader has built in defaults to select an editor model based on your main model, or you can choose an editor model yourself with the dash dash editor dash model and then model command. The editor diff and editor whole edit formats are recommended for use by the editor model. Architect mode produces better results than code mode, but uses two LLM requests. This probably makes it slower and more expensive than using code mode. Architect mode is especially useful with OpenAI's O1 models, which are strong at reasoning, but less capable at editing files. Pairing an O1 architect with an editor model like GPT-4.0 or Sonnet will give you the best results. But architect mode is also quite helpful when you use GPT-4.0 or Sonnet at both the architect and the editor, allowing the model to request to solve the problem and edit the files usually provides a better result. And I'll leave a link to that as well as this article going over the architect and editing mode. And you can see here it says try it. The development mode of Ader has built in defaults to support architect and editor coding with 01 preview, 01 mini, GPT 4.0, Sonnet. Run the dash s architect or get started quickly like this. All right, so you can start it in a few couple different ways like shown here like this. 
All right, and then we can see the benchmarks for the different models with diff, full, baseline, etc. here. All right, so if you haven't already exported or set your API keys, you can do so. So you can either run export open router API key equals and then your key here if you're on Mac or Linux or set X open router API key uh, and then your open AI key here if you're on Windows. Now this goes for pretty much any model you're using, whether it's Olama, DeepSeek, OpenAI, Anthropic, um, Gemini, etc. The reason I'm just saying open router is because if you want to use OpenAI's O1 models, which it says it is one of the best for, like O1 preview for reasoning, etc., then you're probably going to want to use open router unless you do have tier 5 unlocked on the OpenAI API console. All right, so to run the architect, you can do ADER dash dash model and then your model right here and then dash dash architect flag and then dash dash editor dash model if you want to select the editor model. All right, by default, uh, Anthropic has some that it selects uh, depending on your base model. But uh, then you can either use, for me, I'm going to use Clodsonic 3.5. So you could either use it through Anthropic. You could also use it through Open Router. Um, they suggest sometimes just because anthropic sometimes gets rate limited but we're gonna go ahead and run this okay so we can see here um, our main model right here uh one preview editor model weak model git repo etc etc right and i'll leave this uh command in the description down below and you can switch it out for whatever model you desire just so you know the right flags to get started using this um this uh architect all right so i'm saying please build me a very modern calendar application using html css js make it professional with some cool useful features we're gonna go ahead and send that and i'm gonna guess this is gonna take a little while so sit back grab a coffee and let's wait okay so we can see here we got this output from the architect so to build a very modern um calendar app you know it's going through the different steps so step one project setup step two html structure styling uh css styling for step three javascript functionality um advanced features optional testing deployment maintenance etc so this is from o1 preview of course it's going to be pretty in-depth and descriptive and we can see that we have tokens 196 cent tokens received 3.2k cost uh 20 cents per message 20 cents session so uh edit the files so we can say yes or no if we want to continue so i'm gonna say yes now i'm curious how much of that it's actually going to do that's quite a lot that it gave us um so okay so it's created wow okay that that was really quick obviously it was uh clots on it so we got the html got the css here and the js and we are going to say yes create those files yes create that file Yes, create this file. So similar to something like how Claude Dev works, how Cursor works, and now add JS to chat. I mean, sure. Okay, so I created the files here. It looks like I'm trying to add it to chat and it's having a bit of an error. But let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so here we have our calendar app. And it's actually, okay, I'm not going to lie. This is a lot better than I expected, especially on a one shot go. Right. Usually when I do a calendar app, first of all, like usually when you do any app, even if it's a very basic app, you're going to have to go back and forth and just like maybe do some minor bug fixes, which of course we would want to improve upon this if we were making this an actual calendar app. But one thing to note just off the bat is that um, most times when I do a calendar app, it completely screws up in terms of the dates, like it won't get the dates right. So as you can see, it's December here and it's, you know, Monday, uh, the 30th, it's got the dates correct, right? Which should be something that's fairly simple for, you know, an advanced LLM, but believe me, a lot of them get this wrong. So out of the box, we can see all the dates here are working and it, I've actually haven't really seen this too much work the first try, especially with a basic prompt like that. Let's go ahead and talk. Wow. Okay. So toggling dark mode on, even though this is a very basic like feature and setup like usually lots of times when i would toggle dark mode on it may have some issues with like the styling maybe the, the text is like black as well and it doesn't go right so right out of the box as much as this is just a very simple app with not much uh functionality or features 
everything that it did add is correct and is working really really well so i'm actually very impressed um this is a one shot prompt right so and it actually didn't take as long as i expected i actually thought it was going to take a lot longer now in terms of like iterating upon this using it back and forth and using this on a day-to-day -day with the dev experience i think it uh it may be a little bit longer it may not be as nice maybe as something like cursor where it's a little bit more you know has a nice nicer dev experience in my opinion personally but let me know what your thoughts are compared with this to cursor i definitely think Ader is on the right track and i think they're um really releasing some cool features and if they continue in increasing that percentage from 50 percent 60 percent 70 percent of new releases written by Ader, and uh, i think it's going to be pretty impressive in the next few weeks next few months I mean, even just what we're seeing right here, I think that, you know, this improving upon itself is going to be pretty crazy, making it really, really strong. Now, also too, like I mentioned at the start of this video, it does now have support for the Gemini models. So, or well, the new Gemini models. So um, you can see, I'm not going to cover this in depth here, but Gemini 1.5 Pro, um, essentially long, like pretty good long context. Uh, uh, you can see the input cost per million tokens and output has been slashed in half essentially, which is pretty good. Um, well, effective October 1st, so tomorrow. We got increased rate limits, two times faster output, and three times less latency. So you can check out these Gemini models as well. Um, they're definitely good if you want it for basically very, very cheap. All right, so let's say if we started up uh eight or normal just with like a open um open ai 01 preview model alone and then we did forward slash architect right here and we can say forward slash architect and then you can say a prompt here such as make a task app that is very modern and professional using html js and css all right guys so all in all i think this release is pretty big for Ader. i think this is the next step in terms of the architect and editor and i don't think this is like the end all be all and um, personally, I don't think that I, I, I'm still going to be using Cursor Composer and I still really like Cursor, but I think they're on the right track, like I said, and very excited to see what they have in store for the future. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below in terms of Ader versus maybe Cursor, in terms of using Ader with the architect and editor. Do you think it's useful? Are you going to be using it? Have you been using it yet? And what's your favorite AI pair programmer? Are you on Team Ader, Claude Dev, Cursor? Let me know in the comments down below, guys. If you're new to this channel, we upload videos every single day on AI automation, business growth, AI coding. So if you like that type of content and you got some value here, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to stay up to date with the daily uploads. Other than that, guys, if you haven't already joined our free Discord and free Facebook community, go to stridecommunity.com. Link will be in the description down below, as well as all the different resources we went over in today's video. Other than that, guys, I will see you in tomorrow's video. Keep hustling, keep grinding, and of course, guys, accelerate your stride. Take care.